Hello, Rank187, and welcome to Combat Mission Black Sea. We're kicking off a brand new series. We're having a head to head game, and we're going to review it play by play against Chaps Games. So, this is going to be a kind of blue on blue, where we both take a US mechanized force. I'm going to be uh, partaking in a 30 minute meeting engagement, where we're going to play out each turn uh, once per day on both our YouTube channels simultaneously. So in this first video, I'm going to run through our force selection, an overview of the map, as well as our initial game plan and opening moves. So I'm pretty excited to jump in and get stuck in, and hope you guys are too. So without further ado, we're going to have a look at our force selection. But before we come back to this pretty 3D image of things, I wanted to actually have a look at it on the point selection map, because some of the discussions which don't often get captured around this force selection is the relative costs of things. So let's... Jump back to that and have a look and see what it looks like. Okay, so this is the uh, force selection screen for anyone who's unfamiliar with uh, CM Quick Battles or Head to Head. And essentially on the left hand side, you have everything you can purchase. These are all the formations available in game. You can tweak from formations down to single vehicles or specialist teams, but this is showing actual formation at the minute. And on the right hand side is our chosen troops. We have a budget of 5,350 points. This is a small. Um, engagement and um, we have an equal number of points on rarity so for our forces that we're going to play with i built them around a bradley cavalry squadron so this is bradley cavalry squadron armored here which loosely translates to this organization here you can see on the right now a full armored squadron consists of uh, several troops a troop b troop and c troop c troop um, and you see these grayed out ones are the ones which i have essentially deleted so we just can't afford it you know full uh full cavalry armor squad in there's what 16,000 points something like that yeah, yeah there you go so far more than we can afford so i'm really trimming it back but we're going to keep the broad structure so delete c troop delete b troop one with any troop i have um actually got rid of second platoon and the more section so we're down to just the first platoon. don't worry about any of this stuff that's extra we'll talk about later so we're back down to just this first platoon if you can kind of see if you expand over here a similar thing, you know, we come in with uh, three cavalry troops and two scout platoons in each, plus some more or some things. So yeah, we've, as like I said, we're, we're a mechanized, so we don't have any tanks, so we can bring in with strikers and Bradleys. I think Bradleys is a far superior vehicle, so that's when we wanted to base it around. And then through points restrictions, I've had to come down to this kind of cavalry squadron, rather than perhaps uh, one of the more uh, infantry heavy squadrons that might be able to get out of it. Uh, and yeah, and so we've we've trimmed it down just to, to try and get something which is reasonable and affordable. So we're kind of really we're just bringing uh, a troop or first platoon of a troop plus its HQ element. So we'll have first and seventh section and the HQ from first platoon. We'll have a troop headquarters and then we'll have the overall cavalry squadron headquarters. I don't have any planes, so I've dropped the uh, teacup team uh, and I've also dropped one Bradley vehicle from here. Uh, the ops team can just hitch a ride in this. Uh, Humvee if need will, needed and again that was just for point saving uh, and why we don't bring, bring planes um, I find them in commission to essentially be overpriced and underperforming so if you look at something like air support um, and um, oh, I don't know pick any of these right okay there's, an, there's a couple of Apache longbows they come in at a whopping uh, 3420 points for two of them are 1700 if you want one of them you know for a single attack helicopter that is a, a ridiculous chunk of my points or hey you want an anti-tank fighting falcon hey you want a wing of them 4226 points it's just so much of your points it feels just i i don't know how you can ever really justify it within <laughs> within any kind of head-to-head -head game so no air support I also don't think my opponent's going to have any air support for that exact same reason it's very very expensive and like i said i also think it's it, it does feel very underwhelming in CM. You can sometimes get some nice hits and some nice kills, but compared to what I feel like they should be capable of, it just doesn't quite doesn't quite do it for us. So no air support. Uh, again, I don't think Chaps can bring in air support, so a, no A capability either. I don't think it's really important. So we're not worrying about that. Um, the one aerial support we have brought is our Raven drone. So we've just got the one and. I was toying with trying to afford another, um, and it is very tempting because I think they are super useful. I've seen from our striker campaign, but again, they're not—they are not the cheapest thing. So we're sitting there at four hundred points. So that's 
uh, what's a Bradley and a half, essentially. So here we've got equivalent of 10, I think it's 10 Bradley, or is it 9, 2, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9, 9 Bradleys in our main kind of fighting squad. This is the main formation that we're bringing. Um, so would I willing be able to drop down to essentially 7 or maybe 8 if you could squeeze some other things out for the sake of one more drone? That's a tough call. And maybe something I come to later regret, but as it stands, I've gone for more fighting forces, a single drone. It's not the biggest map, so I'm hopeful we can move the drone around. I appreciate you guys haven't seen the map yet. Um, but this is kind of my thoughts in organizing this squad. So here's my, my core. Uh, I then tried to supplement it, which is kind of all these bits and pieces down here. And what we've we done? Well, I think in Black Sea in, in, in general, um, in any kind of vehicular combat, javelin teams are super powerful. And um, the getting them in a position where the enemy, where they have line of sight where enemies advance is a, it's just a huge threat. And, and we've seen that play out in modern combat as well. It was happening over in the, in the, in the eastern Ukraine. Whereas it's this really interesting dynamic where a very small, mobile, uh, soft target team, the javelin team, actually has an, a tremendous stopping ability against certainly individual vehicles, let alone formation. So definitely wanted to beef up my overall support with a couple of jab teams to try and uh, dent some of Jap's vehicles. So I've gone for that. In addition, I wanted some uh, scouting capability. And so I've, I've opted for three sniper teams. And uh, so I'll admit I'm, I'm building this after the fact. So my decisions are all happened now. And uh, yeah, I thought well, these could be obviously relatively small, hopefully fairly mobile, act as kind of eyes and ears, ideally maybe pick off some of Chap's own uh, javelin teams, etc. You know, good line of sight, good engagement ranges. Uh, that was my kind of general thought, but they might be useful in that kind of role. Also, they are slightly cheaper than a javelin team, so you can see they're at maybe about 60% of the cost. Um, but obviously, to Chap's perspective, are still going to appear as that kind of vehicular threat or you know when you get a semi-contact of infantry you don't know if that's going to be uh, a squad a javelin or a sniper or whatever i mean your your base assumption is that everyone has an at weapon and there's a threat so i thought it might be useful a cheaper way to get some eyes and ears threat to infantry as well as provide a psychological threat to some of these vehicles uh, similarly uh, with the MG teams and the grenade launcher again, so it's a bit more uh, oomph than the sniper teams for maybe engaging heavier targets. Again, try and lock down areas perhaps or take out infantry support um, and, and just give me a bit of variety. Also, I, I, and I've gone for a complete smattering here of sniper calibers, HM, uh, machine gun calibers and grenade launcher. I kind of just wanted to play around with a couple of different things. So I will put my hand up and heartily admit that the variation here is not through some kind of uh, core tactical decision and just because I wanted to get a bunch of different squads and play around with them because I thought it'd be fun. <laughs> Similarly is this last one as well and this is probably just because we've been playing through a striker campaign and it's it's uh, it's warmed my heart a little bit that I've decided to bring an MGS with this. Um, it's not complete ludicrous -y. and the reason for that is so we've got within our Bradleys obviously there's a 25mm cannon we've got our tow missiles um, but there's no uh, you know, large caliber, caliber direct threat. So I thought if I bring my MGS, there's a couple of roles it can do here. One is if we end up in the place in terms of uh, direct vehicle combat, obviously they've got that kind of more immediate stopping power. The 25 millimeter cannon, I don't think it's going to take out a vehicle straight away. Certainly not, the, you know, the like for like that we've got. Not Bradley by any chance. Um, and your tow missiles are slightly smaller, uh, slower, sorry. So I thought that may, may be useful if we get in the right position to act to anti-vehicular capability. And the other one is there are a few buildings in the map, and again, appreciate you guys haven't seen that yet, and it might be useful with the heat rounds just to hammer buildings if we want to start getting into clear -ups. That was That was the logic I then tacked on to, to my very kind of clear heart decision rather than head decision that I wanted to fancy bringing this MGS to play around with. And then in addition, I've got some artillery support. And we've ended up with two batteries here of these 105 mil howitzers. Now, I definitely was tempted, if we go back to the artillery formations, uh, to bring the 155s. Um, also very capable, very credible. Has the Excalibur um, precision rounds as well, which I think is hugely impactful with, with the Raven. But, uh, you know, 1,164 points, that's a lot. 
There's a lot. So essentially, if I wanted to bring one, three, you know, barrels of 155s, I would want to give up my MGS and my one of, and, and all my 105s. And it didn't really play into what I was trying to do. And we'll only be getting to that when we talk about the um, plan and the strategy that I'm, I'm going to apply. Uh, but it just, it was... It was too expensive. My poor, cheap Scottish heart said, oh, I think I think we can get more bang for a buck out of the 105s. And I may come to regret that later, not having the same capabilities as 155s too. Um, but I felt like I might be able to make it work. And so that's the squad that we're taking with. So we can go back over now, we can see them in the flesh, and we can start having a first poke around the map. Oh, I wanted to, uh, before we jump, I forgot to mention something. Uh, so currently on this view, they're all, my troops are regular and normal. Um, as you can see, I've still got un some unspent points in the actual game because this is this is not my game build. Uh, I did go through and um, increase the experience of a number of the Bradleys. Um, I don't think I played around with the motivation too much, but that's where my remaining points went into essentially coming along here and making these guys uh, veterans. And I think I just kept it at veteran. I don't think I can afford everyone. No, I, I can't quite. So... I went and I made a whole bunch of people veteran, although not everyone, um, and that was where my remaining points went. I forgot to mention that. Okay, so here we are in the flesh. As you can see, we've got our kind of nine core Bradleys, which I mean formation that we're using here and, and the operations team in the Humvee. And then we've got our support teams of our MGS, two javelins, two machine gun teams. You can see we've got one with the 50 cal and then one with the, just what's it, 7.62 meter. 7.62 millimeter machine gun, uh, and then the automatic grenade launcher, and then we've got our three scout teams with a plethora of different uh, sniper rifles. Awesome. Right. Okay. Let's have a quick look at this map now. So it's a fairly small map. Maybe we'll try and look at it, kind of end on for just now. I'll maybe zoom out and look down. There might be an easy way to get a first impression of it. Okay. Um, Oh, tell you what I forgot to mention as well. We have two target reference points, which I neglected in our overall force build-up. But yeah, that was the, the agreement with uh, chat was we could bring two target reference points, which we did. I think they're about 50 points each. Anyway, we'll come back to it in a minute. Uh, the map. So you can see it's uh, split. We've got a major VP down here, one minor VP in the north, and these three in the centre. Our deployment zone is here in the red, and chaps, you can't see it, but it's going to be just on this right-hand side opposite us obviously in what is the blue. Uh, it's a fairly flat map. I'm going to come down and give you a bit of an angle on it. Um, you see there's not really any dominating terrain features in terms of uh, gradients and hills. There's a slight rise over on this flank, uh, which you can see, a bit of a hill. Not a huge amount to speak about, but it does give a little bit of view and things. And there's a few minor slopes in places, but nothing huge. So if you come down here and you can see down to the ground there's a little bit of a slope up this plateau, but it's all it's all fairly minimal. There's no major kind of dominating features that way. Um, it is, however, fairly heavily wooded. You know, there isn't actually too many places with huge long um, sight lines. Uh, it's all, you know, it's all broken up. Short sight lines, bits of wood, uh, obviously relatively a reasonable number of buildings. Um, so it's quite an interesting force and probably lends itself actually to a more or to a heavier infantry focused element than really a vehicle focused element but whatever, we're going to play around with what we've got our cavalry teams here are only three men so they are fairly small we should get the job done uh, okay in terms of what is our plan and what is our progress and where we sit compared to where chap sits then there's obviously an advantage in terms of we are closer to this VP, and obviously he's a, he's a mirrored one there. Um, it's probably 50-50, but it's one in the centre. However, I think we have an easier time of it over to the major VP on the right-hand side. From where he is from his uh, deployment zone. So we may have an opportunity to try and push out forces to the right and secure that major VP for ourselves, and then try and contend more of the, the major minor VPs. I mean, ideally... Uh, want to be in a position where if we can secure some advantageous ground then kind of hopefully make chap come to us there's always that advantage in sitting still and uh and spotting their advancing troops than it is in trying to advance into a, a, a concealed enemy especially with plenty of javelins flying around uh so i think overall i don't say i think i know because i've 
already planned turn zero and it's happened. Uh, our, our initial strategy is going to be to send some of our forces forward to secure the first VP minimum VP objective here. I don't think we're going to make a mad dash for this middle one, but we still want to, to kind of secure this general area and have forces able to respond. I'm definitely going to spend some forces out to the right hand flank to secure to contend the major VP. Um, but I don't want to leave my left hand flank exposed, flank exposed. I I'm quite happy to give up on this minor VP objective. I'll let him take that. But I do want to spin some resources out here and uh, to act, well, hopefully to engage his forces, but also act as a screen. In general, I think I'm going to spread myself relatively evenly and probably relatively thinly. Uh, so I don't, I'm not going to course, concentrate force too much in any one direction. And my kind of game plan here is I want to, I want to try and engage and degrade Chaps forces uh, on a fairly kind of small scale fringe engagements. And then uh, ideally kind of hopefully win the battle over here and then we could turn his flank well, holding him off with a kind of more defensive posture on his left hand flank, hopefully inflicting losses as he perhaps tries to flank himself or push through this minor VP. So that's that's a kind of broad scale approach. Take and hold the middle, try and uh, secure some offensive operations on the right hand flank, defensive ones on the left. To facilitate this, I'm going to take one of the uh, 105 mil batteries that we've got and I'm going to run some area denial operations. So I'm going to drop them on a harass mission just the length of this kind of tree line along these objectives just to hamper his ability to first push in from his deployment zone and then also to kind of laterally push in through these woods. Uh, I'm going to keep them in harass because they should be able to go essentially the entire 30 minutes without expending their supply, just dropping shells occasionally uh, making life unpleasant for anyone that wants to hang around in there. The other one I'm going to hold back and um, attempt to use it more offensively and tactically. Though I don't have a currently a crystal clear idea of exactly where I want to drop it. Uh, and the Raven will set up just in the middle. I think that's where we'll go. So um, I will, I'll tell you what, I'll jump now to the next one where I've got my forces set up for the initial deployment. And we will talk about what that looks like and, and maybe why we've split the forces up the way we have. Okay, let's start out on this right hand flank. So we're going to send, uh, which section is this? Doo -doo -doo. First section um, in the entirety is going to spin out to this right hand flank. Firstly, secure a position in these tree lines and then push into the major VP. This B fist here with our uh, Raven controller is going to hang back and keep himself safe while he controls that. Um, and we're also keeping our MGS in reserve. He's just hanging out on this flank. So he's not, these two vehicles are not involved in this initial push. Supporting this first section element, we're going to have one javelin team. It's going to move up into the wood line here, just with line of sight across this open ground, just in case chap decides to try and rush any vehicles across the major VP. And then we're going to push out with our um, kind of medium MG team and one of the sniper teams. Again, try and get them into this, this wood line with reasonable line of sight, uh, just to try and identify any chap's forces pushing across the open ground uh, towards that major VP. So the, the plan, ideally, we'll get our vehicles out there First turn, once we're happy and secure and got some supporting elements with eyes out over the scrub ground, then we can push our vehicles up towards the, the major VP itself. So that's our right hand flank. Uh, out in the center here, so we've now got second section. These guys are going to push in towards the minimum VP here, uh, Vitoro. They're not going to go straight into it and they're actually going to take up positions in and amongst the tree lines here with a, again, with a, trying to get eyes on on the uh, open ground here again to see if tra chaps traversing troops up towards this tree line to hopefully try and secure some some early fire on those on the troops and cause some injuries we also have a number of dismounted troops we've got our grenade launcher team and our sniper team and they're going to be working their way quite rapidly in towards this min vp and try and secure positions in it meanwhile on the kind of left of center so we've got our um, troop hq who's calling in that denial of uh, area mission that we talked about and again, he's just going to kind of stay back and keep himself safe. Uh, and then we've got the, uh, this must be uh, A Troops commanding officer and his supporting Bradley. And they're going to kind of come up into this gap 
uh, threatening this kind of second two VPs and again hope to try and identify and engage chaps forces there but without rushing straight into the objective and again they've got one sniper team one MG team and our operations team in support and they'll be making their way in foot into these wood lines as well to act as a bit of a scout uh, why is the operations team all out of the vehicle we see well that's because I've stolen their Humvee and I've snuck a javelin team in it um, and they have decided to be part of my screening team on this left hand flank so I've got one Bradley here and one uh, javelin team in uh, Humvee and they're going to spin out to this left hand flank uh, and the plan is going to be stick the Bradley in this kind of tree line again watching long over the sight lines and then quite aggressively I'm going to push the Humvee uh, and the javelin team just to try and get up on this hill uh, to hopefully kind of spot and saw some carnage. It's it's a fairly risky play. It's probably going to be, uh, if anything, they might get one or two kills and then die, um, if I'm lucky. But it, I, I think it's, it's a relatively um, safe but aggressive move. I don't want to be too passive, so I do want to try and spin them out there to hold that forward plank, um, picket line. And that's what we're doing. So we've got most of our forces kind of committed, albeit in a fairly uh, conservative way. And then we're holding back essentially two Bradleys who are doing some uh, drone or artillery duty and one MGS just so we decide where we best want to use that. And that's kind of our opening moves. Um, I think this is going to be an interesting game. I'm relatively inexperienced when it comes to multiplayer competition. I think I have three and a half games under my belt maybe four and a half if i remember correctly uh, all of which are against relatively inexperienced opponents so i think it's going to be interesting to see what how different it is going up against someone of, of chaps caliber i think it's in a lot of uh, pvp games and you know it's, i think it's a fairly challenging opponent and i'm really interested actually to find out how the some of the habits and and the uh processes I use in, in predominantly single player combat mission and where they are come up short when it comes to the, the PvP stuff. So I think it's going to be a bit of an, a bit of an interesting learning experience. Uh, hopefully I can come out with my head held high, but we shall see how it goes. But as I said at the start, we're going to be this one play by play, so we're going to have one turn up every day for the next month. Uh, hopefully there'll be relatively short videos. Um, I don't want to make half an hour for every minute turn so aiming kind of in the five to ten depending on what we what happens what you talk about um but that's the kind of gist of the series and hopefully you go you guys will enjoy it too um and i'm also very interested to see what things look like from chap's perspective uh, so i will put a link down below and uh, i'll obviously be watching his videos to see what happens on his side uh yeah i can't wait to see how it goes so i'm excited to see how this is going to turn out i hope you guys are as well uh, and yeah, we'll see you in the next video for turn zero when we will kick off the action. I'll see you then.